Hi there, I'm Mike Gratticelli, a broadcast industry consultant here with today with Mel Medina. He's CEO of a company called Samaserve, which represents a line of cameras, uh, camera systems, I should say, uh, called Nepros, which um, really is, is quite revolutionary in that the fact that it's, it's a system that can handle a number of different cameras. Am I correct? Correct. Our systems are completely neutral or agnostic, as some folks refer it to. Right. And by that, what we mean is neutral as far as camera manufacturer is concerned. We're not tied to any particular form factor as well, whether that's shoulder mount or handicam. Right. So neutral in the full sense of the word. And which is great because we happen to be on a set today of shooting 4K, and they're using different cameras at different times. So it's been great, right, to be able to just interchange the camera on the same sled. Absolutely. Um, typically, you wouldn't have different cameras on, on a location because you want to maintain the imagery from shot to shot, but if you have a different application, let's say, or your rental um, house or a truck operation, for instance, where you do need the same types of systemization from camera to camera, whether that's an Ikigami, a Sony, Panasonic, whoever's, right. they all require the same types of systems. So from that standpoint, it's very easy to outfit the rig, per se, the HDS 300, for any one of those. Um, so now, of course, this is a ca camera systemization system. Um, why, why do people need to systemize their cameras? And Systemization is important in multi-camera shoots as well as any shoots that take place within a studio, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, and by systemization, what we mean is the ability to transfer signals to and from the camera. Not only the image itself or the, the, the uh, main video signal as well as the audio, but we also have to transport signals that are important and relevant to the camera operator and as well as the, uh, the talent itself. For instance, teleprompter, right? Something sure. that the talent needs to see. Uh, IFB, for instance, they need to hear back any commands from uh, the producer or the engineering staff. Um, the camera operator also needs to have intercom systems so that he can hear the producer or the technical director as far as which shots he needs to make. Um, synchroniz synchronization signals need to be transported to the camera, what we typically call gen lock, okay. so that all of the camera signals are in sync at the switcher so that the switches can take place properly. Um, and that's pretty much it, as well as power, obviously, for the camera itself. Another key attribute I found that I was very interesting is not only half the price of other systems out there, mm. but also it's only made up of six components, which I'm assuming you can put together rather easily. Absolutely. It, you know, the main components are of, of all of the uh, systemization um, products that we sell is a camera adapter as well as a base station. Those are the two that transport all of the signals to and from. So the base station is really the end point for the camera's imagery as well as um, any communication from the camera operator. It's also the ingest point for all of the signals that need to be transported to the camera. The camera adapter is the, 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 uh, the device at the camera site which receives and sends all of those signals back to the base station. So those two components are key for any systemization, whether it's a full-out studio or even a handheld rigged uh, um, or I should say tethered type of configuration, which is common in, in live productions. Right. What, we, what we have here today is the HDS 300, which is generally more for a studio or an OB type of production. Okay. So this would be the third component, right? The sled itself, which would hold the actual camera as well as support a viewfinder on top um, or a monitor, um, as well as any other monitors that might be required for uh, a producer who might be on set, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, the rig also can support the teleprompter as well, um, as well as any other devices that need to be used with the camera. So that's component number three. Component number four would be the viewfinder on top. Okay. Um, and then we have the intercoms themselves, the, either the double muff um, headsets or the single muff headsets. Um, and that's pretty much all that you would require from our side to systemize the equipment, as well as the various cables you that are necessary and required for interfacing to the camera and to our system, right. and the hardware, obviously, to, to make sure. it all fit. Sure. Another unique thing I noticed about the system is the, the, the power involved. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, and today in sport, you see a lot of slow motion replay with sure. these cameras that require a lot of power. Mm -hmm. This system is able to handle that. Talk about that a little bit. Um, we have two systems, actually, two flavors of the LS750. We have the LS750, and then we have the LS750 GT. The 750 being our preferred, so to speak, 4K um, system, fiber system. Um, as far as power is concerned, the 750 can supply up to 80 watts of power for up to two kilometers with no extra ancillary equipment required. So the, 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 uh, the camera adapter itself will transport the power that's delivered from the base station two kilometers to the camera side. We also have the 750 GT, which is capable of of supplying up to 300 watts of power. 
So we've talked a lot about the power requirements, and we talked about fiber being, allowing signals to go further. But the fact that you can accommodate different cameras, like we mentioned before, sure. means you have to have a lot of connectivity on this thing. Right. Talk about that. Sure. Um, again, uh, talking about the 750, the 750 can accommodate, like you say, several different cameras. In the 4K world, there are cameras that require uh, four 3G uh, interfaces to okay. transport their raw signals. Other sure. cameras require one, other cameras require two. Our system, our 750 system, we uh, mark it as a 4K plus X, in other words. So five streams? Five streams, oh. right. So we have actually five 3G streams in our device. So by that, what, what, we're, what I'm trying to say is that we can support, for instance, the Sony F55, which requires the uh, four 3G streams to output its raw signal. Okay. The F55 can also, as of a current, uh, a recent, I should say, update will allow you to output simultaneously a down-converted HD signal. So we can use the fifth pipe, so to speak, the right. fifth channel, to transport that HD signal as well from the F55. When we have a camera um, like, for instance, the Phantom Flex 4K, which is uh, slightly power hungry, yeah. for lack of a better very term. Very popular for slow motion. Very, very popular. It's pretty much the standard of the industry, so to speak. Our 750 GT can supply all of the power requirements for that camera. We, again, like I stated earlier, we can supply up to 300 watts of power. The system can also supply either 12 or 24 volts of power as well. Um, we also have an Ethernet connection or an Ethernet channel that allows you to transport uh, um, data to and from the base station to the camera. A camera like the Phantom uh, Flex 4K requires a, a LAN connection to control the camera itself we supply that channel as well, or that interface. Um, we also have the ability to connect the cameras, uh, the camera manufacturer's specific camera controller. A camera controller like the RMB750, let's say, or the RCP1000 from Sony. Okay. Um, and there are others from Panasonic as well. Our adapter has an individual connector and interface for either Sony and in, uh, uh, Ikigami, or Panasonic, and those are uniquely labeled on the backside of the adapter. So there's no mistake made when you connect the system. So in other words, if you have an RMB750, which would typically sit with the video engineer back at Video Village, let's say, or at the base station, sure. at the truck, he's the guy who's going to be controlling the levels of the camera. He needs to control iris, black levels, and things of that sort. That's when you need the RCP or the RMB or the other controller types. This is what I'm talking about when I say full systemization. We give you that flexibility. Or and, that, so, and it's all built into the It's all been built, built in, in, correct. In addition to the requirements of certain cameras to, to be controlled using a, a, a LAN connection, we can also control other devices at the camera location. For instance, a pan, tilt, zoom head, a PTZ head, as it's commonly called. Gotcha. That may require data or RS-422, RS-232, or even a LAN connection. We can control that PTC head or send the control signals to that PTC head using our base station. So no extra infrastructure is required in that situation. Nice, nice. So at the end of the day, what I'm, what I'm getting is that, you know, you can get system, system cameras from, let's say, Sony, Panasonic, RED, but they're built for those cameras. Correct. If you have a, another camera, they're not going to work. You design a system that accommodates all different cameras. Right. We design a system that it can accommodate any camera. And typically, you know, the, the, the unique requirement from camera to camera is basically its control aspect. Okay. And that's very easy for us to implement as far as what type of data is transmitted from the base station to the camera adapter. But that, that's a great ROI thing for people, aren't they? Absolutely. I mean, for this one camera, I can use it for a lot of different things. Sure.